I like to call it the filter concept. Okay. We need trusted filters to filter out all that crap. Okay. So I need to be able to select somebody and say, you New York Times, I trust you to filter this crap out for me. Is you, in essence, are trying to act as, as that filter. Right. At one level of the filter. So, okay. you know, I mean, in traditionally there's been multi-level filters in that like i mean just take the music industry as a model so you have 10,000 bands out there some of them are good some of them are bad some of them are in the middle somewhere and someone finds them and right. says you are good enough to put money into okay but the reason why they need to put money into them is to separate them from all those other bands so there's one filter and then that person is putting money in them because the next level of the filter being the press, the music press, traditional music, you know, magazines and I mean, even blogs can fit into this. Um, but any music press, radio, anything that's going to publicize music and separate from you know, those people, they don't have time to listen to all those things. So they need it to be filtered one step first, which is this band is worth putting money and time into. Okay. And then that person that put money and time into that band is promoting them to the press who promotes them to the public. So there's that two-stage filter thing to take it from 10,000 to 2,000 to 20. Okay. You know, that actually get publicized and make it big. Um, and, and so you're operating in that in wh where that in there? first level of filters. First level. So okay. we're saying, okay, out of these 10,000, we like these three, and we're going to take, we're going to move them up to the next level of filter and try to get them onto that top level, you know? Okay. Um, now it looks and like the idea, whether you succeed or fail is whether you're good, whether you're one of the better filters, you know, like okay. if you pick the three that are, do actually get up there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, there's no one on the planet that can sit out there and like actually listen to every band themselves. You need to find filters that you trust. And, um, and there's been a lot of arguments out there about why the record industry is failing and the record industry is blaming people and the fans are blaming the record industry and the record industry is blaming illegal downloading. And there was one blog that I read uh, and it, it really said what I, I think is the case. And that is that, uh, that they really wouldn't, the record industry really wouldn't be in the place it is if they had if the major labels in general had released anything that people really, really wanted to listen to right, <laughs> in the right. last little while, you know, like, I mean, there've been a couple here and there, but for the most part, it's like, you know, old bands releasing the same old stuff or new bands that sound just like the old bands. And then there's not really anything going on. So, um, and they said, you know what, if they had released anything that was really revolutionary and great and new and they'd be fine. And I don't know if they'd necessarily be fine, but I think it probably has a good deal to do with it. Well, well that is just, the complaint. They're failing in their filter. It's that the larger companies have not succeeded in the filtering requirement. The, and the bottom line is that the major labels are not making the money they used to make. Um, I don't think it has, I don't think it can all be blamed on the MP3, you know? Right. Um, people are saying, oh, well, they just haven't embraced it. Uh, uh, the bottom line is there's always going to be a need for the record industry. Like the music right. industry grew organically out of a need to, to get those 10,000 or way more than that. I'm being very nice to the amount of bands out there. Uh, 10,000 bands to the 10 bands per month that you can possibly get into, or that's probably a big number, so you know? So you've like, actually had a band, you've had a band that you have plucked from those 10,000 and as you've put it on your site, they've graduated. Um, yeah. Okay. Sure. And so do you can say, is that, so, so is that the success story you're looking for with bands? Nope. Um, okay. that was their success story. So, okay. um, when, like I said, our job here as a company and my specific job here is to make sure that all these people that are doing things uh, cool things with their lives that they want to do and making good art, whether it's music or TV or comedy or whatever it is, you know, our job is to make sure that those people can do that as their full-time job. Okay. And that's the goal. That's a success story. Hey, do you, do you, do you work in a coffee shop in your off time or do you just play in this band? I just play in this band. 
success stories. And so for Tally Hall, which is the band that's now on Atlantic Records, that was their version of that success story. Like, hey, if we get you a contract, you know, if we work you up to the point where you can get not only a contract, but a good, solid contract with Atlantic Records, and, you know, we align them with a very good, solid booking agent and a good, solid management company and things like that. So they have a lot of support and they are able to... Which is effectively the distribution channel for bands. I mean, kind of coming back to the site. Booking agents are very important. You're right. Um, and, uh, and their management was very important in making sure that that deal with Atlantic was a good one for them and that, that they were going to be able to, you know, quit their day jobs on. Now, those guys never had... They went right out of college, so they never actually went into the day job world. But, right. um, but that's the goal, is just to to get these guys, all the bands we work with, to the point where they don't have day jobs. Okay. Tally Hall okay. was Atlantic Records. There's other bands that we're working with where um, and then you I might... don't necessarily think that's the goal. Like, we can totally get them to quit their day job without Atlantic Records. So how that's do That's sort of a, a, a boost to the... <laughs> we don't know how long it's going to last, but it definitely gets you there real fast, you know? But, so how do you, how do how does Quack make money in this process? I mean, we're so you're providing value adding by acting as that first level of filter. So are you taking a representation fee, or how does that work? Um, honestly, it's uh, traditionally it's just been a record contract. Um, okay. Like usual, oh, okay. Uh, you make records for us. We sell the records. We pay you royalty on the records. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. And. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, and we obviously fund the recording and the publicity and the marketing and all that okay. stuff. And, um, so you're like an indie label, basically. Right. The Quack Media that um, traditionally with Tally Hall we were, with a lot of the other bands we're working with right now, we are. Uh, we're working with a band now called The Hard Lessons, okay. uh, who are a big deal in Detroit and around here and regionally. Um, and our deal with them is a little different, but that's all I can always really say about it. So it's a oh. different kind of deal. Okay. And, uh, and, and so essentially, it's um, it's what I think is the solution to the music industry. Um, can you give us some broad outlines as to what that might be without maybe going into the particulars yeah, that you want to keep? Um, it's a, it's a set, we're calling it a music partnership instead of a record label. Okay. Um, being you know, and it's all based on the idea that uh, that the old the old way of monetizing music that somebody made up a hundred years ago. Right. Um, does, doesn't really work out anymore. Okay. Uh, because of the different mediums that are available now and the, the way, whether it had to, or it's a product or it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of digital music. Um, it's, it's, it is where it is right now. And the current way of monetizing it doesn't really work out. So, but you still need to monetize it. Which is to sell, the current way being selling CDs and other physical artifacts. The, they've monetized the recorded master. So okay. this information that is this specific recording of this song uh, is what we are going to sell this to you. And, mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to make the bulk of our money. There's obviously other income streams, but that's like the bulk of the record industry is based on. Um, and you know that's not that revenue stream really isn't working anymore. Uh, right. The, and I don't think that the general public ever understood that that's what they were buying was this recorded master. Okay. Um, so anyway, that, it's based on that, and but it's also based on the fact that okay, well we can't monetize that anymore or not as well. Uh, but we got to monetize something. Right. Because the music, I mean, again, somebody has to pay for that filtering. Right. Right. Somebody does. Right, right. Um, it's not going to work out. Music isn't going to work out unless you're only ever going to listen to bands that are like from your neighborhood. Right. The, the, your physical geographic neighborhood. Um, it's not going to work. You know, like you can't, oh, I only find all my music on MySpace and it's free and the power is in the artist's hands. Well, you know what? It's They're always going to be a, fil a, a hierarchy, you know? How do you get featured on MySpace? Oh, well, you have to get the attention of the editors of MySpace. Right, right. Oh, well, how do you get their attention? Well, you hire a PR agent. How do you afford them? You monetize your music.